God love Diana. <laughs> God love her. Ooh. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we're looking at the funniest BBC weather bloopers to happen live on air. You all right? <laughs> Sorry. Quick <laughs> throat. I think we've lost her. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 10. The Perils of Technology These days, you'd struggle to get younger people to believe that once, weather forecasts were all done with pen and paper graphics. And you can see, instead of having one symbol for Wales, the cloud breaks, the rain moves, and we give much more accurate forecasts these days. The transition took some adjusting to, even for weather veteran Carol Kirkwood. She was telling the audience what the weather maps used to look like versus the flashy 3D graphics the BBC uses now, but her clicker seemed to get stuck. Let's take a look at the forecast for the weekend. First of all, what we have is not that chart. We're going to quickly skip through them again. She was trapped on the wrong screen, and though we could see her clicking to try and move on, it just didn't seem to work. That's the kind of thing that would never happen if you have a big sheet of paper with rain clouds drawn all over it. We've also got some rain around, and that's coming in quickly from the west. Technology is great, isn't it? My charts are good backwards and forwards. Number 9. Dog on the Beach More from Carol. This time she was presenting live from West Wittering during a spell of hot weather. But it quietens down a touch on Sunday, although it will still be hot and humid, not quite as hot and humid. She was there on rather a grimy British beach, but the beach was about to get even grimier when somebody's dog wandered into frame. She was trying to finish her segment and hand the link back to the studio when the dog squatted down and did its business right behind her. Not quite as hot and humid as it's going to be in the next few days, Charlie and Lou. Oh, Carol, don't look behind you. Don't, don't turn around. <laughs> Laughter could be heard from the BBC breakfast sofa as Charlie State advised Carol to ignore the dog. I was staged by a dog. It's the story of my life. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> but perhaps most worryingly of all, no owner appeared to clean up the mess. Hopefully, they were just waiting for the cameras to switch off. Number eight, Helen Willits walks off. Hello, good afternoon. More wet and very windy weather will sweep its way across the UK through the rest of the afternoon. Moving on to Helen Willits, she got through her entire weather forecast no problem, though she did seem to be struggling to focus a bit near the end. Unfortunately, she misjudged when the camera was going to cut and walked off way too early. As for Friday and the weekend, it looks a bit more sunshine and showers, but again, it remains unsettled. She pulls her face, walks away and scalds herself and it's not clear exactly what was going on. Didn't go out of vision, Helen. For our money, it looks as if she had a cold and was going to sneeze, or that her nose might have been a bit itchy. Walking away early to do a sneeze makes sense, though, and we can't really blame her for this incident, since nobody wants to do a huge sneeze live on telly. Number seven, town name. At the moment, it looks like we have a potent area of low pressure coming our way. We need to block this chart. Cavill returns one last time for another classic moment where she was again at odds with her own clicker. While giving the forecast, a list of locations comes up behind her, all of them saying town name and giving the temperature as 99 degrees Celsius. It looks like it's going to bring some wet and windy weather, possibly with some snow, across some southern areas. Obviously this is a mistake, and her graphics haven't been completed yet. Though she briefly steps in the way, Carol realises that it's her mistake, and the clicker goes back and removes town name from the screen. She apologised, and Bill Turnbull styled it out, making the joke everybody was thinking about town name scorching weather. That was entirely my fault. I clicked my clicker twice and that came up. So sorry about that. Susanna, you know, back to it's, you. It's going to be boiling in town then. <laughs> Number six, Edinburgh. Now it's time for a different weather veteran, Tomas Schaffernacker, losing control during a routine forecast. It's pretty misty and murky there in, um, in uh, Edinburgh. Thank you, gallery. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what set him off was forgetting which city Jane Hill had linked him from with a producer in the gallery quickly clearing it up. 
He composed himself briefly, but then he had to give the forecast for Scotland. Uh, here's the weekend uh, headline. So staying dry and uh, sunny. Seeing Edinburgh there on the screen got him going again, and he briefly struggled. And then it came up one last time when we got the rundown of the temperatures in the UK's four capitals, with Edinburgh being right there at the top. He just about made it through. Number five. Prince Charles. I'm delighted to say we've got a new member of our weather team tonight. Uh, let me hand over to him now. Yes. He's the king now, but back in 2012, when he stepped in to read the forecast, he was still Prince of Wales. Well, it's an unsettled picture as we head towards the end of the week. Uh, this afternoon it'll be cold, wet and windy across most of Scotland. But it wasn't a standard reading of the forecast from the teleprompter, because somebody at the Beeb had a sense of humour about the whole thing and gave him a script with a bunch of jokes. The map had various royal estates added to it, so that we could see what the weather in Dumfries House and Balmoral was going to be. There'll be snow for the higher ground of the Highlands and Aberdeenshire. The potential for a few flurries over Balmoral, who the hell wrote this script, uh, as the afternoon goes on. The King joked about his disdain for the script, clearly expecting it was just going to be a normal forecast. He also wasn't all that great at reading the prompter quickly either. Number 4. Peter Kay. Not once, but twice has he done this. Both times tormenting Diane Oxbury on BBC Northwest Tonight. Overnight temperatures. Roasting. It's absolutely it's muggy. It's very close. It's very clammy tonight. He was seen crawling into frame so that he could invade the screen and have a go at presenting the weather himself. Both times, it was a scorcher, and we wonder if it was any cooler inside the studio. Top temperature tomorrow afternoon. Wait for it. 27, which Woo! is what? Which is what? Uh, it's three times that in it and something 80. else. 80. 80. Well oh, there'll be no Arctic roll left in Asda. She gave him a crash course in reading from the big screen and which graphics showed the sun and which were showing the wind speed and wind direction. He did it a second time the following year, though at least, hearing that Kay was back on the show, Diane was probably expecting him to cause more chaos. Hi! <laughs> It's roasting, Diane! Well, you just do it then! It's roasting outside! <laughs> Number 3. Giggle Fit It was Louise Lear who lost it this time, unable to keep her composure when Simon McCoy handed over to her for the forecast. I'll tell you what, we'll do it. Come back to me on camera <laughs> three. <laughs> Despite strong winds and rains across Scotland and Ireland and a looming storm, she just couldn't stop laughing. Now, let's get a weather update. Here is Louise Lear. Thank you, Simon. Good evening, everybody. I'll try and keep it together because it's not a laughing matter with the weather in Scotland today's view. <laughs> Sorry. She did just about manage to get through it, though, which is impressive. We've all been in situations where you just can't stop laughing, even though it isn't the right time. And it's one of the last things you want to happen while you're broadcasting live. We only wish we knew what had set her off. In fact, we've seen gale force gusts into Wales and across the north parts of England. We've had some. Sorry. Number two, Michael Fish gets it wrong. We didn't know at the time that Fish had made an immense blunder, but hindsight is 2020. In this classic segment, a woman rang in to say that she was concerned about the worsening weather, prompting Fish to say that it wasn't anything to worry about. Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. That was the day of the Great Storm of 1987, a cyclone that struck Western Europe that October. It did billions of pounds of damage and tragically, killed two dozen people in the UK and France. But well, there's a vicious looking area of low pressure on our doorstep, nevertheless, around about the Brittany area, and that is going to head across the southeastern corner of the country. The storm absolutely devastated the country, and Fish has never lived the mistake down. He bizarrely redid his infamous weather forecast and gave the correct predictions as part of a promotion for a seafood restaurant in Brixton in 2012. Good evening to you. Earlier on today, a woman rang in and said that she'd heard there was a hurricane on the way. Well, I can assure you that in fact, that is, and it's going to be rather big. Number 1. Schaffernacker's Finger Another, far more iconic Schaffernacker moment was, of course, when he flipped off the camera during a broadcast. Now, we'll have the weather forecast in a minute, and of course it'll be 100% accurate and provide all the detail you could possibly want. Though he tried to cover it up, we all saw what he did, and he was clearly mortified. 
He wasn't gesturing to the viewers at home, though. This was all aimed at Simon McCoy, who had just handed over to him for the forecast, and joked that his predictions weren't all that accurate. I've just seen Thomas Schaffernacker <laughs> preparing uh, for it, so I'm not in touch. Ah! Every now and then there's always one mistake. That was it. The BBC quickly apologised for the lack of professionalism in the newsroom, but this would eventually happen again, and not during the weather. In December 2023, BBC news presenter Maria Moshiri was broadcast doing the exact same thing. Whoops! Live from London, this is BBC News. Let us know in the comments which BBC weather presenter is your favourite. Thank God it isn't a bank holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.